after you've had a biopsy or a resection of a mass in your large intestine that was found to be called um, colonic adenocarcinoma by the pathologist, your oncologist will want to order follow-up testing to help determine what type of mutations are in your cancer that contributed to the process of making it a cancer. But at the same time, it can be used to help fight the cancer and help select the drugs that will be best targeted to your particular tumor. This particular test would look for mutations in four genes, KRAS, NRAS, HRAS, and BRAF. And these are all genes that are part of that EGFR pathway. And those are the genes that are located in the cascade that will be important to that drug's effectiveness and mechanism of action. So if you have any of mutations along that cascade, you wouldn't respond as well. So we'll take that DNA and test for mutations in those genes so that your oncologist will have information about your mutations in your cancer and then be able to better select drugs that will be most effective for you. Ordering oncologists should know that this test is being performed by next generation sequencing, that we have a very high uh, depth of coverage so we can test um, small samples, biopsy samples, for example, can be tested. We still do need to look at several factors when we look at the tissues that we're testing. We still need to make sure that there's a good tumor percent and that there's enough cellularity to provide enough DNA in the extraction um, in order to run the test and have good quality in the test results and have confidence in the test results. And for that, I would um, make sure that clinicians know size of tissue, the size of the tumor in the tissue, the percentage of the tumor cells, is also important. And that comes into play particularly with mucinous lesions, where you have a lot of mucin and you can make the diagnosis on, on relatively few cells, but there's not a lot of DNA in there. So those sometimes get to be an issue. The early uh, reports looking at resistance to anti-EGFR drugs focused on KRAS, and it only focused on a couple of the codons in exon 2 of KRAS. However, we knew that there were mutations that existed in other, in other areas of the gene. And as time has evolved, studies have started to include some of those other mutations, and we've learned that some of them are also resistant mutations. And so the number of, or the region of KRAS that we have to test for now has grown. The initial recommendations really only looked at the first seven mutations that were identified in codons 12 and 13. But now we want to look at a number of other codons, and the percentage of individuals with colorectal cancer who have mutations in the entire gene that are known to be resistant to anti-EGFR therapy has grown to about 35%. Now for, B, for NRAS, the number's at about 20%. Again, looking at a number of codons within the gene. For BRAF, we're looking at a range of 10 to 15% of, of colorectal cancers have BRAF mutations as well. And so the more we learn about what causes resistance and the different genes that are involved in the pathways, we you know, know, have a better sense of what to test for. And actually, that's something that was very interesting because when those first studies came out showing resistance to KRAS, we knew that having the mutation predicted that you wouldn't respond. But we knew of all the people that were negative for those initial codons, for those initial mutations, only a percentage of them responded. So we knew that we were still missing something, some predictor that we hadn't identified yet. And so as time has gone on, we've identified more and more of these mutations. And so the more recent studies have looked at this quadruple negative, where you look at the three members of the RAS family as well as BRAF. And if all of those genes are negative, their predictive value for responding has actually improved. And so that's why they're now the, the recommendations have been modified and are being modified, both in Europe and in the United States, to include a broader range of mutations that individuals should be tested for to determine whether or not they're eligible for anti-EGFR therapy. For melanoma, the story is a bit different. For melanoma, some of the more recently approved FDA drugs uh, to treat this disorder have focused on uh, the BRAF, the activated BRAF gene, and trying to shut that off, as that's one of the major drivers in melanoma. And so testing has been approved and testing is performed to look for activating mutations, particularly at the V600 codon. And there are two particular mutations that are known to be activating and are required in order to have uh, access to the drug. And so you're, because you're most likely to respond to these drugs if you have these mutations in your tumor. And therefore, BRAF testing has become a part of the, the workup that's done for melanoma tumors. But depending on the body site, you could have up to a 40 or 60% chance of having a BRAF mutation. 
So of course that would be favorable because you would be eligible for the drug. The difference for this particular test is that it's not just looking at the V600 codon. It looks across the hotspot regions of BRAF, and so you get a better, a more complete view of mutations that are present in the melanoma, not just that that are present in codon 600.